Hi. So I'm Ben Galuski, and I'm calling you uh, live from Shy Hack Night here in the beautiful uh, Merchandise Mart in Chicago. And I will share my screen here. Whoa. <laughs> oh, that is, that is so cool. I got, like, anyway. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about a project that we're working on, a national voter file. And this is part of a, uh, a larger effort uh, called Movement, which has its own Slack channel. So I'll start off here with um, what is a voter file? So you can kind of see most of the, most of the stuff here, but it uh, comes from the secretaries of state, and it contains information like the person's name and address and uh, history of the elections that they've participated in. It also, uh, some files contain the voter's age and contact information and possibly their po political party preference. So if you've taken a um, uh, Republican uh, ballot during a primary, then that would get recorded. What is it good for? Well, there's a lot of uh, very traditional uses for them, for canvassing voters, identifying voters to canvas, uh, targeting them for different advertising purposes. Uh, but we're looking in our uh, progressive coder applications, uh, some interesting applications. So uh, one would be doing A-B testing of voter registration drives. So um, you're doing, um, we're able to, you know, since we're downloading the data monthly, we can look at, at a census block level the efficacy of, of different voter registration drives. Or also, once we get the voter uh, results, uh, we can see on, uh, with A-B testing maybe different campaigns and how they work to get the vote out. Uh, someone else has suggested we can actually monitor this monthly and look for mass purges of um, voters from the registry, because that would show up uh, as, a, as a delta in, their, in the file. Um, we're hoping to be able to use this in a broader sense in some other uh, of the applications we'll be talking about tonight of uh, definitive definitions of a lot of uh, static data around um, government jurisdictions and other sorts of things. And then one of the biggest applications that we're very excited about is creating grassroots campaigns. And um, movement is all about uh, really going out and doing canvassing and maybe Having, helping voters find their candidates instead of always being the other way around of candidates finding voters. Like I mentioned, it comes from secretaries of state's offices, and they're responsible for providing these files. It's, uh, each state has their own file format, and a number of states charge for this file, and some states charge exorbitant fees for the files. Um, traditionally, the parties, uh, well, the, the parties have the highest quality versions of this file. They, they download it, they maintain it, they keep histories of uh, voting and canvassing history. The problem is that each state's uh, party determines who gets access to the data. And so for, I live in, for example, I, I live in Illinois, and the Democratic Party, uh, the arch Machiavellian uh, uh, state, uh, state Speaker of the House, he said flat out that if you're running against an incumbent, you just can't have the data. So there's also commercial vendors that will sell the data sets, but that's an expensive way to get going. So the challenges that we're facing as a project is there are uh, 50 different data formats. Some states charge a lot, like Alabama charges $30,000 uh, a pop just to get the data. And so we've done a study, and it would cost $144,000 each month to download this data. So we're looking at funding sources, and there's actually some people looking about bringing suits against the secretaries of state, saying this is inherently anti-democratic. Um, and the data is not always the cleanest, so, you know, errors and omissions. So this is not going to look great here. Let's see if I can zoom in on this. So uh, I work in uh, industry and data warehousing, and so we're using some uh, data warehousing techniques to represent this. So we have different models. I'm not expecting you to... I just want to kind of give you a brief feel for what we're looking at here. So this is a model that represents each voter report that we download. And so we have, we separate it out into households. We can keep track of how many people live in a household. Voters, um, the voter file is a definitive uh, report of what jurisdiction everyone lives in, at state senate, state representative, uh, rep, you know, federal uh, congressional district. So we want to record all that information. Um, if we can enrich it with social media data, all the better. And um, all this data gets tracked uh, on a historic basis. So you can compare last month's report to this month's report and see that 
this person voted Republican when they lived in this district, but then they moved to a different district, and now they vote Democrat. Um, another model that we have is canvassing. So now that we've got this great data about voters and households, if we're canvassing or doing phone banking, if we record that information, it's now tied into a very rich dimensional model that you can do analysis and, and slice them up by uh, um, different, uh, different attributes. Um, a model that I've been very interested in is, um, oh, come on here, is uh, campaign contributions. And so since hopefully a number of contributions come from voters, as we begin to capture this data, we should be able to report uh, voter contributions and slice that by different demographic uh, information. So then a big deal is um, how you authorize access to this data. And so what we're looking at is sort of like a social media model where you have um, campaigns uh, that are allied with other campaigns. And you might have staffers who work for a campaign or staffers who support uh, different campaigns, and so uh, we're going to be authorizing data. You can have, you can contribute data to this model, and you can either make it private, just for you. You can make it public, so it benefits everyone who has access to the database. Or you could say, I want to share this data with my allies, or maybe open it up a bit more and say, allies of allies. Time for a quick demonstration. Uh, so first off. We're using a uh, ETL tool that is uh, very productivity enhancing called uh, Pentaho Data Integration, familiarly known as Kettle. And so we've already been loading uh, data from Washington. And so it has things where you can um, specify the files and match it up with the fields and the types. And then it looks up, uh, tries to match up households and if it's not, if it's there, it can reuse it. Otherwise, it creates a new one, and so on and so forth. And it's a very productive environment for doing these loads. I was able to to load a lot of data uh, from a complicated file fairly quickly, and then uh, come up with some fun queries. Here is just like uh, the number of households, 2.4 million, and then if I look at uh, voters, there is 4.6 million. And I did some queries, which I shared in the chat channel uh, over the weekend, about looking at things of how many uh, voters live in a household. And so there's, you can see by zip code which households are, you know, which zip codes have the highest number of voters uh, per household. So just some fun stuff that hopefully as we get more dimensional data, it will get more interesting. Oh, that was not the one that I wanted to share. So. How can you help? Uh, so we have um, all these different dimensions, like I've shown, of uh, you know um, households, census tracts, states. Uh, we need to identify what are the interesting, uh, in, new interesting dimensions you want to slice the data by. Help us figure out what attributes we want to record. Help us find sources to get the data, and uh, we're working on a process to geocode all the households. Definitely need help on the canvassing model and definitely need more eyes looking at the data uh, to see you know, what issues there might be with it. And here are some links 